Okay, let's get started. First of all, I apologize for the silly title, but everybody else had cool titles for their talks, and I figured if I just said how to do plugins, it would be too boring. So I made a, made a lousy joke. Okay, so what we're going to cover, and we've got a lot of, we, we don't have as much, a lot of time, so we'll do this quickly. What are plugins? What can you do? What can you use them for? We'll go through some of the different types and the different events. What is so great about plugins? Plugins are my favorite type of extension, without a doubt. Uh, hopefully, you'll see why. And then we're going to go through some examples of how to write them. Okay? What are plugins? Well, obviously, they're the type of Joomla extension. They're managed. Everybody here is familiar with the plugin manager, how to manage the plugins. Uh, a plugin is a program that runs at a fixed point in the Joomla request cycle. And that fixed point is called an event. Now, it's very confusing if you've learned about event driven programming. Events for plugins are different. That's not something that the user does typically. It's typically at a fixed point in the cycle. Okay? So it's a little different than, than the way that word is used uh, in, in other contexts. Plugins interrupt the normal processing to let you inject your own code and tweak things in the middle of the execution cycle. They work behind the scenes normally and they, and they change the way things work. Basically, the, the way that they work is very simple. Joomla fires an event, for example, on after initialize. The system goes out and checks for any plugins that match that event. It executes them in the order that they're listed in the, in the plugin manager, and then it resumes the normal processing with whatever changes were made. Now, resuming the normal processing could be quite different after the plugin is fired, as we'll see in one of the examples. So why are plugins so confusing? I think one of the reasons is that uh, the other Joomla extensions are defined by what they do. You know, modules, this little guy on the side, the components, the big thing on the page. Plugins are defined by how they work. Plugins can do all different kinds of things. So you can't say a plugin does this or a plugin does that. But all plugins work the same way. There's an event that's fired, there's code that's run that interrupts, and then things resume. But I, I think that's part of why, it's, why, why it can be a difficult concept for people. Okay, so now we're going to see an example of an older plugin. Everybody see that? So here's a guy. This is an old movie of a train where the train picks up the mailbag as it's going along. So this guy's hanging the mailbag on the, on the mailbag hanger, and then the train's going to come along. The guy's going to stick out a hook and grab the mailbag. And that's how a plugin works. Okay, so we're all done? Everybody got that? Okay, let's see, what do I got here? Okay, back here. Oh, dang. One of these days I'll learn how to use these programs. Okay, so if we want to look at, did everybody understand that? Could people see that well enough, how that works? So the event, we can think of the event as the mailbag holder. We can think of the site man, admin here, he's enabling the plugin by hanging the thing. The train is the Joomla execution cycle, it's coming down the track. The dispatcher is the hook that's going to hook in the mailbag. And the, the plugin is executed when the train pulls in the, pulls in the mailbag. Okay? Everybody got that? So I think we're done now, right? Okay, so now we're going to have some fun. Everybody, where did I put these things? Okay. Where did I put my, uh-oh. Uh-oh, I have a technical problem. Kidding me. After all that, I've lost my. Oh, I got them out here. 
Okay. This is what happens when you get older. Okay, so I need, to, I need everybody to get up here because we're going to do a human plug-in demonstration. This is the most important part of this class. Okay, so I need 12 people to be the execution cycle and then I need 12 people to be plug-ins. So let's put the execution cycle people over here. Yeah, so I need 12 people over here and, I need and then I need, I think, 12 people over here. Okay, so you need to get yourselves in order here. Hand these out and get in order 1 through 12. And then, come on, we need more people. Here we go. So you just need to know what kind of event you are. Okay, you guys are plugins. So, how many you need more? How many more do you need? Three. Okay, we need three more people here. Grab a... Okay, now you guys in order? Get, in, get like in a circle in an order here. Okay, now, who's left? Okay, I need two people here. Come on up. Come on up. I need somebody with a loud voice. Who, want, who wants to be the dispatcher? That's a very important job. Do you want to be the dispatcher? Oh no, you don't get a card. You're going to be the so you're going to be the, you're going to be the you're going to be the program pointer, okay? Okay. Are we ready? Okay. Okay, here we go. So we're going to start at number 1. Okay. So when you get to an event that, ha that when you get to a step that has an event, whoever has an event has to tell her that we're going to get the dispatcher to go over and get any plugins that match the event, okay? So we start here. Who's the, who's our execution cycle? Are you the execu Okay. I'm the, I don't remember. Do you want to be the dispatcher or the, the dispatcher. Okay, so you're the execution cycle. So you start here. Okay, so read out what you got. Execution cycle step one, app initialize. Okay, so you initialize, then we go to this one. So you got a point. You're the pointer here. You got a point. So execution cycle step two, don't ask this, uh, trigger event. Okay, so you trigger an event. We need the dispatcher. What event are we triggering? On the after initial. On after initialize. Okay, come on, come on up. No, we need the no, we need the person. Keep keep holding. Who else? Anybody else on after initialize? Uh, just the one. Okay, so you get to, you execute, and now you're all done. You go to the first. Yeah, you execute, and we're done. Okay, so let's go to the next step. Execution you're done. cycle step three. Yes. At root. Pardon? Okay. Okay, root. Execution cycle step three. App root. Okay, no event. Okay. This trigger event on after root. Okay, on after root. On after root. Nope. No events. Okay, that's a no, no plugins. Let's keep going. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Execution cycle step five. App to dispatch. Okay. Execution cycle step six, execute com content. Keep going on my if statement or wait? Oh, no, yeah, well, that's, okay, I'm sorry. I, I, I should have said we're executing a save task right now. So we're doing a save task. Okay. okay? So, so we're doing a save task. So if task equal article save, next instruction, step seven. Okay, good. Execution cycle step seven, uh, trigger component events. On content prepare form. Okay, so let's do one at a time. On content prepare form. On content prepare. I have on content prepare. Okay. No, no, no. On content prepare form. No. On content. Oh, no. 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 I want the correct form. On content. Okay, what's the next event? What's the next event? On content before save. On content before save. On content before Be save. Before save. Oh. Content after save. Uncontent. After save. Okay, we got one. Okay, you get to execute. <gasps> Finally. <laughs> okay, what's yeah, next? Okay. What's next? Um, on content clean cache. We don't clean cache in June. No, we don't. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, next instruction, step eight. Step eight. You have to go. Yeah, you're, you're done. You're done. You're back to the plugins.
Back to the plugins, I'm sorry. It's the way it goes. Step seven, redirect to com content. Task default display. Next instruction, step one. Okay, so we go back to step one here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Same as before. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. But the, go, go ahead. On after initialize. On after initialize. Oh, nothing. Okay. Execution cycle step three at root. Next instruction four. Execution cycle step four. This trigger event on after root. Next. On after root. Oh, okay. Five. Execution cycle step five. App to dispatch. Execution cycle step six. Execute com content. Are we on default? Yeah, display? yeah. If task equals default display, next instruction step nine. Nine. Where's nine? Execution cycle step nine. Trigger component events. On content prepare. On content prepare. Yeah. Okay, there we go. What's next? On content after title. Oh, you have to go and oh. <laughs> Okay, we're done. Okay, we're all done. Okay. okay. <laughs> so I have to go back? Yeah. On content after title. No, after title? Okay. After the dispatcher. Yeah, the dispatcher has to do it. Yeah. On, con on content after title. After after okay, what's so next? On content before display. On content after display. No, okay. <laughs> next one. Execution cycle step 10. Uh, trigger event on after dispatch. On after oh! Okay. Just one? We only have one? Okay, wait a second, wait a second, hold it, hold it, hold it. You guys gotta decide who comes first, one at a time, one at a time. Who comes? No, 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 who's number one? Okay, good. So you gotta make sure you do it in the right order. Okay, so you guys are good. Very good. Okay. Next step. Execution cycle, step 11, app render. Next instruction, step 12. Execution cycle step 12, trigger events on before render. On before render. Great, we're all done. Thank you very much. Inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> now, please keep your sheets, keep your, keep your sheets and write your name on the back, because we're going to have a drawing. Keep your sheets and write your name on the back, we're going to have a drawing. Write your name on the back of the sheet, we're going to have a drawing. Write, write your name on the back. <laughs> what am I? Where am I? Yes. Yes. Well. It's a good question. Okay, so the question is, how much do, do processing plugins slow down the execution of the thing? Obviously, it happens a little faster than, than what we had up here. It's actually very quick the way it's architected. It's very quick to check for plugins. So the execution overhead, I mean, there's a little bit, but it's not. The, the execution overhead is, is pretty small. Obviously, if, it, if the plugin is doing a lot of processing, then it will slow things down. But, but the process of actually checking for the, ex the plugins and executing them is, is so very minor. The question is more, if you have a bunch of plugins, then it will slow down, right? Well, if you, yeah, I mean, it, it, but bear in mind that any kind of CPU processing, generally speaking, is, is orders of magnitude faster than the other steps in the process. You know, uh, going, making a round trip to the database, for example, is orders of magnitude takes longer than, than the processing that's happening, the CPU processing. So as a practical matter, yeah, if you were doing, and, and again, this is one execution cycle. So 
If you're doing something where you're doing a whole bunch of execution cycles without rendering a page, it could be an issue. But normally, when you're rendering a page, there are a lot of other things that are going to be going on that are a lot slower. OK, so what did we learn? Well, one thing we learned is not all these plugins got executed, right? I mean, a lot of times, a plugin's just going to sit around, not doing anything, waiting for the right event, right? And not, and, and not all events find plugins to trigger. OK, what can we, oh boy, that's like invisible, isn't it? What can we use plugins for? OK, the hardest thing about plugins often is understanding the events and understanding where you can use them. OK, so as we mentioned before, plugins can do a wide variety of things. We can, you, things like check user logins, load editors, fix up document links for SEF, uh, check that a category is empty before we delete it. Override almost any core class in Joomla. We can override with a plugin. A lot of times, if you find yourself saying, boy, if I could just get this one thing to work just a little differently, that's what I want, a lot of times the solution might be a plugin. Okay, so let's talk about events. Events are the things, as we saw, where you can insert plugins. And in the core, the events are, are you know, predefined for you. In your own extensions, you can define as many events as you want. It's just a line of code says, tell the dispatcher to go find this kind of plugin. And you have to be careful about the naming, as we'll see when we get into the examples, um, because as we saw, the name is very important. The name has to match the event, otherwise, it won't find the plugin. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, please. Why wouldn't you, if I'm writing an extension, a component, why wouldn't I just do an if statement within my component code instead of that, plugin? That is a great question, and we'll get to that. Let me, let me we'll, I'll bring that back in a, in a minute here, okay? So the question was, why not just do an if statement and, and, and do the code, write the code. If I was doing my own extension, why not just do it versus do it as a plugin? And that's a great question. And in some cases, you would. In other cases, you wouldn't. OK, so let's talk about the different kinds of events. There are about six or eight different kinds of events. And they're, it's, important to kind of, it's, it's important to just kind of know that they're there so that you know where to look when you, when you need them. So system events are events that happen on every cycle, no matter what kind of task is being done, OK? So like on after render is a system event that happens every Yes? What you're saying is a program cycle. OK. Uh, it's, it's a cycle where the browser is sending a request to the server, and then the server is sending a page back in response. The question was, what is a cycle? OK? And in the example we did, and I probably should have explained this beforehand, the, in some cases, Joomla will do two execution cycles to do one thing. For example, the, the, our example up here was saving an article. When I hit the Save button on an article, it executes one cycle to save the article into the database. And then it says, redirect to the default task. So let's say we were editing the article it would redirect back to that default task. Okay, so it's actually two execution cycles. So an execution cycle is where the browser's sending something to the server and then the server's sending the page back. Okay? So every execution cycle, we have system events. Authentication events are very specialized. They're, they're used when you authenticate a user when you sign on either the front end or the back end. And it just has the one event. Uh, on user authenticate. And an example is all of the authentication plugins use this. And that, that's why you can have as many different kinds of authentication into a Joomla website as you want, because it's written in a plugin. So that's, that's one example of why you wouldn't do an if then. If we did an if then, you'd have a finite list of possibilities. If we, if we make it a plugin, you could have, you know, anybody can write their own uh, authentication code. So it's just, it's just a real easy way to make a really flexible uh, program that can be uh, changed in, un, you know, in almost unlimited ways 
without uh, having to hack anything. User events are related to creating users, saving users, and, and uh, you know, that kind of thing. Content events are related, as you might expect, to, to editing, saving, viewing content items. And we saw there were, on the content example, there were a bunch of them, right? There's like on before title, on after title. So there's all kinds of ways to really fine tune where you would want to tweak that. The editor events, and editor plugins are really kind of different from the other plugins. Their editors in Joomla are very difficult and kind of advanced topic, but, but, they're in, but again, because they're implemented with plugins, we can have as many different editors as we want. And there's a wiki page where you can um, see all of the different plugin events. The other thing that's really important is if you, if you install from, the, the, uh, from Git or, or from uh, the SVN, there's a folder called tests. How many, are most people familiar with the test folder or not? Okay, if you, if you install from the SVN, there's a folder that, would get, that gets deleted when we create the production versions of Joomla called tests. And uh, in there is a, is, a, is, a te is a plugins folder that has, if you're ever gonna write a plugin and you're not, and, and you need some help, this is the first place to look because it's got example code for every kind of plugin and every kind of event. So the simplest thing is to copy one of these examples and then, and then rename it and work with it. And again, that's available on, you know, in the test folder. Okay, so what's so great about plugins? Flexibility is, the, is, is one of the really good ones. Of course, you can turn them on and off with the plugin manager, and anything that's implemented in the core as a plugin, you can turn off and replace with your own, okay? And you can do a lot with a little bit of code, as we'll see in the examples. Okay, so Paul, here's where I, here's where I would answer your question. When we were figuring out version 1.6, we had a big discussion about what should we do when a user tries to delete a category that has articles in it, right? I mean, there, you could say you shouldn't allow them to delete, or maybe you should delete the category and all the articles that are in it, or you could move the articles to trash, or move the articles to another category, so what we did was we came up with what we thought was a reasonable default behavior, but we implemented it as a plugin. So that if you, if, if, if you have a site where your needs for what should happen in this scenario are different than what the bug squad came up with, it's okay. You can implement your solution as a plugin. You just disable the core plugin for that and, and, and drop in your own plugin and go on your merry way. Exactly, exactly. And in fact, workflow is one of the reasons why my, it was before my time in Joomla, but that's my understanding of one of the main reasons why this whole plugin thing was, I think this was all added in 1.5. Is that, I, I believe that's when plugins were added. So they just provide a tremendous amount of flexibility. Yes, Chad. Okay. Okay. Okay, so how do we write plugins? It's, it's the actual process of doing it. Once you've figured out the event that you need to, to hook into, the actual process of writing a plugin, they're by far the easiest extensions to write because typically there's, there are two files, and if, you have, if there's any UI where you have languages, then you've got a, maybe a language file but they're, they're typically two or three files. They, they often very little code. You do have to be careful about the naming. You have to put them in the right folder and you have to have, follow the right naming conventions and we'll see that. And you have to be careful about the context. Okay, and we'll talk about that a little bit when we get into examples. Okay, so the first example is um, to add a signature to an article, okay? Let's see here if I can actually, I should be able to figure this out.
Where is Eclipse? Okay. Okay. So let's see here. Let's start with the XML file. Okay, so with any Joomla extension, how, how many people have, have written Joomla extensions or are familiar with this? Okay, so I won't spend a ton of time on this. But every Joomla extension needs an XML file to, that handles the installation and uninstallation and, and that kind of stuff. And, and, and you can also, of course, add options in here as well. And the simplest thing, if you don't, if you don't understand or aren't familiar with this, again, you just copy one of the existing ones, rename it, and then you just have to deal with uh, you know, things that are fairly obvious. The name is very important on the, on the plugin. So, for example, plugin content example one, that's very important because that tells it it's a plugin, it's a content, it's the type of plugin is content, and, and then the name of the plugin. Okay? And then, of course, the, the name of the file example one needs to match the name of the plugin as well. And then let's, let's look at this code. The code is, is, almost, is very simple. I mean, there's a bunch of comments and stuff. Now this is interesting. I don't know how many people are familiar with the autoloader that was added in, was it 2.5 that we added the autoloader? We used to need this J import statement up there to import the, the plugin program, the, the, the plugin class. We don't need it anymore. It doesn't hurt to have it in there, but you don't need it anymore because the autoloader will uh, find, when you make a call to a class that doesn't exist, the autoloader will go out and look for it. And if the class is named with the proper naming conventions, which the core classes are, then it'll find it for you. Okay. So you'll see examples with this J import, and it doesn't hurt at all to have it, but you don't need it. Now, this the, so the name here of the class is very important. The first, it has to be the PLG to tell it's a plugin. Then the next thing has to be the, the type of plugin, and then the name of the plugin. And then they always extend J plugin, which is the parent class of all plugins. And then there's a bunch of comments, which we'll skip here. And so this is the this is the entire code that we're actually writing for our plugin. Now I mentioned briefly that we, we have to check the context. Normally the first thing you'll see in any plugin method is kind of a statement that says, where am I? Because you think about it, the plugins are sleeping over here, they get woken up, they get called over there, they don't know anything about where we are in the execution cycle or whether, in this case, we don't know are we in an article, are we in a contact, are we in a web link, we don't know where we are. Okay, and in this example we want to add a signature to the end of our article. We only want to do it if we're adding an article. Obviously you don't want to add a signature every time we edit and save an article, otherwise we'll get, you know, <laughs> you know every signature. So we just in the, in the method signature up there, we have context, and that's there for a reason. It's there to, so the plugin can easily check where the heck am I. So in this case, we're, the context will be the component name and then the, and then the uh, task, or, or the, the, I'm sorry, the, the view. And, and so we say if we're not in the article view of com content, that, and, there's also an is new argument that tells you is this a new, it's a Boolean yet, true or false, tells you if it's, if it's a new article. If both those things aren't true, basically don't do anything, just come down here and re return true, okay? And then only if we're adding an article, then we do a couple things. We, we get the application, we get the user uh, name, and then we add the, we add the username as a signature to the to the end of the intro text. Okay. Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Okay. You're right. 
Yeah, it would be in a, in a real life situation. What happened? Why did I lose my video? However, oh, yes, that's a very good point. If this was a real, if this was a real application, that would be a JTEXT call, not you know, not just hard coded English, right? And you'd also really, if you're really doing a production kind of thing, you'd you'd probably have to check about whether there was full text or intro text or something like that. This is just to keep it keep it simple. Okay? Is everybody any questions about that? On to the next one. Okay, so let's see, what's the... So, the next example um, is using an example based on an event that we added with, um, with the JFORM package in 1.6. And this is a really, this is a really powerful um, thing to know about anytime you're dealing with uh, forms, you know, data entry forms for end users. Because one of the things we, a lot of times we want to do, again, is tweak the form based on some particular situation, you know, maybe what kind of user it is, or maybe some other, some other thing. And with, with the on content prepare form, we have the entire J form, which as you, how many people are familiar with J form? You know, it's an XML uh, representation of a form. We have the entire form in memory, and we can manipulate it any way we want. And the on-content prepare fires before the form is rendered to the screen. So we can change that form so the user only ever sees the modified form. Go ahead, yeah? Um, yeah, I think with that, are you talking about authentication or, yeah, this isn't, this wouldn't be authentication. This would be like I'm, I'm filling out a, 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 you know, a form. I mean, everything in Joomla is for anytime you enter stuff. It could be an article, it could be, but it's a way of modifying, for example, you could disable, well, we use it, for example, we use this event in core that if I, own, if I don't have, um, if I don't have edit state permissions, I can't change publish state, right? I can still edit the article or the whatever the, the item, but I can't. So we use this event to say, if I don't have edit state, just disable those, disable those uh, fields. So SLM, SLM would use it. Right, right, yeah. So in this case, we, we've, We've created an XML file to add a couple fields to the standard Joomla registration form. So, again, we're checking the context to make sure I only want to do, I don't, if I'm not in the registration form, I don't want to do anything, right? I don't want this plugin to add some fields to some other, you know, some other form. So, if, I'm, if I am in the user registration form, and this time I've done the, I've done the, the language, but um, then, I, then I load another XML file, which, which adds a couple more fields, and then I'm actually checking a parameter, and if, if that parameter said I, I dis, if I, depending on how it's set, I disable that. So let's look at the, let's look at the, So I have a very simple XML file that just ha has two more JFORM fields, and, and then that gets injected into the, where am I here? Let's see if I have this. So if I go to my plugin manager, 
not going to like. Yeah. Just want to make sure my plugin is enabled here. Actually, I can go here and check. So if I say create an account, that loads the registration. Yeah, so it's enabled. So it adds these two fields to the, to the form. So I could disable, I could replace this whole form. So a very, very easy way to modify any, any core or even any extensions form. You know, and again, it's, it's you know, it's, uh, whoops, let's see. I mean, that's how much code it takes. You know, so you're just going in, you're saying everything's okay except I want this instead of that. Boom, and you're done. And it can be disabled, it can be, you can put options on it. So, I think, the, I think it's, it's, it's a very powerful, powerful technology here. So, let's see here. What, uh, what is my other example? Okay, so you wanna, do you want to know how to really cause some major problems? Really break things in a, in, a, in a big way? I mentioned that you can override almost any core class. Yeah. You can, you can, you can override almost any core class in Joomla without hacking, uh, without hacking the code. Okay? How do we do that? do that using, remember the first event over here was on and after initialize. Okay. On after initialize happens very early in the process before most of the core classes. There's only been a few, I think JFactory, there's just a handful of core classes that have been already loaded at that point. Most of them are still, haven't been loaded yet. And the way that the class, the way that the loading process works is that if you get your, whoever gets there first is, is in. So, in other words, when, when it goes to load a core class, it says is it, if it already exists, it won't try to load it again, okay? So, um, because of that, we can, oops, I wanna be here. We can create a plugin that loads our class instead of the core class and just implement it as a plugin. So if we go to system here, and I just called this my classes, and again, it's, it's, it's just like any of these other plugins. So what I have done, and again, this is just an example, don't, this is not what you would want to accomplish, but there, there are a lot of legitimate use cases for people that want to you know, want to use their version of a core class instead of, uh, instead of the, the normal one. So what I've done is I've taken the table nested class, which probably is not one you'd actually want to override, but just for fun. And, and I have changed the, um, the rebuild. I have dis basically disabled the rebuild so it just throws a, a, a little line of code so we know that it's running my class and not the core class. Okay, so it's just a proof of concept kind of a thing. And so if I go to my plugin manager and look at system plugins, I should see my classes, and I've got it disabled, which is probably a good idea, but I'm gonna enable it here. Okay, so let's. Yeah, if you have, as we, yeah, I thought I had some examples. I don't know what happened, but yes, if you, if if you, a lot of it depends on what you're doing. In some cases, the order won't be important, but in some cases, um, and and a lot of times when you have extensions that are seem to be incompatible with other extensions, one of the first things to check is the ordering of the plugins because maybe this one needs to go before this other one or something. And that's just, you, you control that in the, in the plugin manager. 
So um, let's just look at, oh, let's see, do I have my classes plug in? Now this one, if you, this is a little different. This is actually not using the, the normal naming convention. This is just running a, a, a script as soon as it's loaded, okay? And that's how, so if you were, if you were using the on after initialize event to load your own class, you'd do something like this. And so I'm just immediately loading my table nested class instead of the, so it gets in there before the standard one, okay? So what I did is I just made a copy of that class, put it in this folder, my classes, and now if I enable this plugin on the, because this plugin is under the, the system uh, folder, it'll get automatically run on the on, in, on and after initialize. That's, that's what basically the, what happened with the overwriting of that place. So it's like a, a plugin checking into that itself. Or not, it well, it's a similar concept. The question is, how, is that how template overrides work? It's a similar thing, except that it's, it's actually programmed into the uh, program to look first at the template folder, and then if it doesn't find it there, look in the normal folder. So by not specifying an event here, we're just we're going to a default event, which is just the very first thing? Yeah. Normally, if, if this was a class declaration, which is the, nor you know, the normal plugin, then what happens is the class is loaded into memory, but nothing is executed until that event is, is triggered. In this case, this code is actually being e e executed as soon as the dispatcher finds it. Okay, so now if I go into my category manager, and again, this is just a proof of concept to show that I'm using my crippled program instead of the real one. If I hit rebuild here, it should just give me a little, yeah, it just gives me a little message to show that it, it isn't doing the normal rebuild, it's just doing my, my silly thing. Okay? So, let me see, I think that's everything that I had as far as... Yeah, so for more information, I think I mentioned on the wiki, there's a document that has, um, that has all of the events. And like I said, the event, finding the right event is 90% of the, of the job in terms of using plugins. And then the other important resource is the test plugins folder. You know, if you're, if you're new to this, that can be very helpful because of the examples that are in there. And then of course there's other, other resources in general on, on writing extensions. So with that, any questions? Yes? So plugins have groups right now? Yes. Well, you, yeah, you look for, yeah, you look through that folder, right. So when it, uh, before a content event, it loads the content plugins. Right. Um, is there a reason why we should keep the segmented groups of plugin types? Instead of having one plugin that can access all events? Okay, so the question is, um, is there a reason to keep the groups versus just having a plugins folder with all the plugins in it. And I think that's, is that, isn't that the way it was in, I try to remember, is that the way it was in 1.5? That there was just the one big? Okay. There were the groups as well? Okay. Um, uh, okay. Well, I think that it's probably kind of a management performance kind of a thing more than anything else. Just if, I, I, on a, on a on the core distribution, it doesn't matter. There are not that many. There are not that many plugins. I guess if you get uh, a larger site with a, with a lot of plugins, then it saves 
you know, from a management point of view, it get, lets you filter them easily in the, in the back end. And, and I suppose from a performance point of view, it, you know, it's a few less things to have to look through on any given, on any given cycle. But it, it's a legitimate question. Yeah. Can you write a plug in that on extension one, after a after a event happens, it'll 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 go to extension number two and run a function off of that? I think so. I mean you'd have to you just have to do a redirect. And I mean I, I would think so. I mean I, let me think about that. Yeah, I mean, I think if you had a, yeah, I think you sure you could. You, you would just you just redirect to a URL, and then it would it would take you wherever you wanted to go. Yeah, yeah. So you would just check for your context, and then you would just you know read build the URL you wanted to redirect to, and then redirect to that URL. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you'd have you'd have a task. So the question is, um, when an when an event calendar schedule gets updated, send an email to uh, the subscribers of that uh, event, right? Yeah, I mean, you would you would have to have a task somewhere that that does that job. You could, in principle, redirect to that task, and then and then probably store in the session somewhere maybe that you want to come back to the place where you were. I mean, it depends on what you want to have happen once that task has happened. But yeah, I mean, as far as I know, in principle, that, that could work. And I think that... Would that be a reasonable way to do something? Yeah, like exactly. No, I, I think a lot of... I mean, I think that, you know, when you're sending an email when something happens, I think a plugin is exactly the right way to do that. Right. Yeah, so like uh, he's saying on the, there's an event on, yeah, so on after, right, you could do that. But, you know, you might, you might have a thing, yeah, for sending email, it depends on what you already have. If you're trying to tie into a task you've already built somewhere else in the app, you could do it that way, but, or you could just fire that code right from the plug-in, as Chad says, yes. Uh, I'm the working group for the Jews. Uh -huh. And on the bootstrap, and, uh, everybody was saying that we have to make something in the front end so people can, can disable what they want if they're not going to use the bootstrap for the template. Or and uh, I suggest so we create a folder for the bootstrap, and we add all the stuff inside, and we create a plugin. Right, right. No, I, I think it's trivial. I, I think I don't think you would be able to measure the difference in the load. So I think it'd be so small. Yeah, and I'm not the world's expert on processing speed and cycles and stuff, but my experience, you have to do something massively silly. In, in terms of CPU time to, 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 no, no. I mean, think of all the plugins that are executing in a normal, you know, Joomla site anyway. I mean, the, the you know, it was designed to, to minimize the amount of overhead. I, I, don't, I don't think adding a plugin adds, uh, you know, a lot of overhead. It's, if anything, it'd be more the complexity. You know, there's, sometimes there's an argument about, you know, adding plugins adds complexity and, you know, makes it more confusing for the site admin. But it's, in my opinion, I don't think the processing time would be a reasonable... I'll bring that opinion to you. Yeah. 
I think it's, it depends, you know, if the plug-in does something very, you know, does a lot of work, then it could be slow. But just checking for the, yeah, yeah, no, it's, I, I don't think you'd be able to measure the difference in speed. Yeah, yeah. Well, we use plugins all over the place. I mean, look at how many plugins are distributed with the core. Every, every good extension uses, I mean, every significant component has plugins, you know, that, I mean, yes, they're used everywhere. Yeah, any other question? Yes. Yeah, there's, a, there's an event um, that was added uh, in 1.6. I can't remember if I mentioned it or not. Okay, come on, baby. What are you doing? Yeah, there's an there's a on before render head event that... that No, you're talking about the document. You're talking about the HTML document, right? Yes. Yeah, there, yeah there, there's, a, there's a new event that was added in 1.6 called um, on, let's see here if I have, where do I have that? Yeah, there's, a, there's an event called on before render head that is exactly designed to do that. Um, it gives you access to the document and all the all the you know elements of the document just before it is about to be rendered. On before render head, I think is what it's called. After. Yeah, but it was added for exactly that reason. Okay, one more, and I think that's it. Yes. Oh yeah, I'm Scott Lee. I'm, thank you so much. Okay, so we need somebody to come up here. I've got a couple books I can give away here. So, let's see here. Has anybody got? Okay, so come up, hand in your cards here.